Let me share a little secret with you. I've never been a fan of training aids or gadgets or any of that sort of thing. I find many of them to be gimmicky, hard to understand, or worst of all, they overcomplicate the golf swing, which I always feel should be a natural extension of you. And every month without fail, I get dozens of inquiries on a lot of times training aids that promise to do amazing things and fix golf swings. And honestly, I just politely decline them because they're more of the same. But once in a blue moon, something comes across my desk that makes me pause and say, hmm, you know, that could work. That seems interesting. That's a good way to handle this problem. So on today's video, I'm gonna show you a product that promises to fix a big time flaw that I have in my swing, and many amateurs have this in their swing. It's one of the biggest things that separates us from the way that professional golfers hit the golf ball. And it promises to tackle this problem in a very unique technological way. So of course that got my attention because you know I love golf technology. So the device is called the Hack Motion and it promises to help me with my full swings as well as with my putting, really getting the mechanics of my golf swing dialed in. Today we're gonna explore it. And full disclosure, Hack Motion has sponsored this video but I will say they have no say in the editorial content. As always, I'm gonna tell you exactly what I think. And there are a couple of gripes I do have with this, so make sure you stay tuned to the end to find out what those are. And while I think this device is good for many golfers out there, I just don't think it's for everyone, and we'll talk about that as well. So if you're ready, let's dive in. All right, we're here in studio. I'm gonna show you in real time what I've been working on. So first we need to get set up. When you unbox this thing, very simple. You've got the unit itself, and then you've also got a charging cable inside the box. The next step is getting this thing on and calibrated. You've got the control unit here, which basically is gonna sit on your wrist, where you'd wear a wrist watch. It connects with this little Velcro strap, and it's in place on top of your wrist. Then you've got the control unit up top that needs to sit on your hand. There's two ways to do that. You can use a little Velcro strap, to get that situated, or you can do what I'm doing here and use this clip to use a golf glove. Especially hitting full shots, I recommend using a golf glove. So we'll put this glove on, and we're just gonna attach this clip to the top, sliding it right into place. Then we're good to go and start calibrating the device. All right, so I've got my app here. Let's go ahead and start working with full swings. We're gonna calibrate this device. So you can set up different profiles for yourself or for other friends or people that might be using this device but uh, I'm gonna go here with the default profile. We're gonna hit start, and now we're gonna calibrate the device. Just two simple steps. Literally, you're gonna hold your wrist out straight and flat, tell it that it's in position, and now we're gonna put our hand up at like a 45 degree angle, tell it that it's in position. All right, so right now, you can see there on screen, it's literally calibrated and showing you exactly what my hand is doing in real time. Very, very cool. So we can start practicing here. All right, here is the theory behind what I'm working on personally. My problem, which a lot of amateurs have, is that I kind of flip my wrists and they're a little too extended through impact. Now, what does that do? Well, my club face is a little open at impact. Many amateurs, often this leads to kind of that poopy little droopy fade, right? And uh, a lot of people struggle with that, even that slice and we lose yards because our club face is open at impact rather than a little bit more closed. Now, what, the, what do the pros do? They're de-lofting the club as they come through it, right? They're a little bit more flexed. If I'm like this, they're more like this coming through. That de-lofts the club. You're gonna hit a little lower trajectory. It's gonna go a little longer, and we're gonna promote more of that draw shot, all right? Something that's kind of turning over. All right, so I've really been working on getting my, my arms up in the air, generating a little bit more club speed, but in so doing, I've really started to get into the bad habit of flipping my wrists, and a lot of times my shots are starting to leak right on me. Okay, so that's what we're trying to fix here today. So first thing you wanna do is you basically wanna just get a baseline of your normal swing. So I'm just gonna take my normal swing here. We've got our foresight range to tell us what we're doing, so we'll see in real time what these changes are doing for us as well. All right, there's a normal shot for me. As you can see, it's leaking a little bit right. Real good carry, though. I had some good power behind that, it looks like. Carried 160, total 172. The spin, 5,900, which is pretty high for me with a seven iron. 
my club speed there 85 miles an hour. Now, as you can see, at the top, I'm a little too flexed, and at the bottom, I'm turning those hands over, and I'm a little too extended. So that's what we're gonna work on, but I'm gonna take a couple more swings again just to continue to establish this baseline. Now there, up at the top, I'm good, but again, at impact, I'm even a little more extended through impact. That shot went a little bit left. Club head speed 83, and I carried 151 there. Spin down, 4,900, 1,000 RPM different. And hit one more shot, again, just kind of normal and regular. There we go, again, I'm losing it a little bit right. My swing generally looks good up at the top, but again, where I'm getting into a little difficulty there, I'm having a little trouble, is that I am too extended. Again, I'm opening up and shots are going a little, a little right on me lately. All right, so now we're gonna try to make some changes here. And what I'm really gonna focus on is up, at the top of my swing is good, but as I come through, I wanna think about bringing my wrist a little bit more extended and kind of turning it down as I go through the ball and hopefully generating a little bit of that lag we see on Instagram and all of the influencers out there. But up at the top, as I come down, instead of my normal shot through the ball, I wanna really, again, work on turning my wrist, turning my wrist downwards and in, and hitting it with a little less loft on the ball. Let's see what happens here. Might take me a few swings to really get it right because <laughs> old habits are tough to break. Let's see what happens though. Well, I did it first time and uh, that was pretty cool. Up at the top, again, very good position. At impact, I was plus six flex. So that is a good position. In real life, in terms of stats, I had club head speed 83. Carried it 153, total 168. My spin there, 5124. But what I really liked is that shot shape, just a little lower trajectory, which was nice, and just a little bit of left to right movement. All right, so if I can dial that in, get my club speed back up to that 85 number, I think we're gonna see some really good results. All right, now what I like about this, you can see I'm on a hot streak, all right? So at the top, my position has been really good at the top. Uh, impact, I've now twice in a row gotten the right impact spot. And that was even a little bit better at plus 10 flexion, okay? You can see a little range there. And look at that, I got my club speed now up to 88 miles an hour there. I didn't think I was swinging it any harder than the last swing. It carried 170 and it went out 181 with the rollout. Boy, if that's adding yards to what I'm doing. And the spin there, 5750, so we're getting that spin down a little bit. Again, as we de-loft that club and really start to turn seven irons into six irons, eight irons into seven irons, so on and so forth. That's what the pros do really well. That's why they have these incredible driving distances. That's why they're hitting nine irons 160 yards or whatever they're hitting them at out there where I'm hitting at 135, 140. Big difference when you deal off the club and you get through at the proper impact point. So it's just a matter of practice. I've been using this thing off and on here for the last couple of weeks, really trying to work on this. And something definitely happened there with that swing for sure. Now, if you're having trouble and you're trying to get into those impact positions, you've actually got articles and you've got videos that they've put right here on the app so you can work on specific drills in order to get to those points. Really cool how they've done this. So there you go, really plain to see the results that can be had getting those wrist angles into the proper place. You can see I've got more power to the shot. I'm taking a little spin off that shot, the trajectory, shot shape, everything looks really good. I am excited and I'm gonna continue to work here with the hack motion. Now, what you saw here was the core version. The core version is $295 US. But you can also add putting when you step up to the plus version really work on getting that face on plane. I know myself, I really need some help in the six to 10 foot area. Lately, I just have not been making those putts like I should, pushing and pulling things and working with the hack motion, I have noticed that I'm adding just a little bit too much 
wrist movement there at impact. So I'm gonna to continue to work on that. The plus version is $200 more at $495. There's also a pro version of this software which is going to give you a much deeper analysis. You're also gonna be able to benchmark your stats against PGA Tour and European Tour professionals. If you really wanna dive deep into the graphs, and really geek out over this stuff, the pro version would be for you, it's $995. But the great news here is you can really start with the core and then you can upgrade as you go. Hack Motion allows you just to pay the difference between the plans, so I really like that. By the way, Hack Motion has given our community 5% off the purchase price of this device. And I've got a link down below if you wanna take advantage of that and save a few dollars. So thank you to Hack Motion for that. Let's get into the positives and the negatives here. There are a couple of negatives like I mentioned up front. I would say the positives here are the fact that it's super user friendly. It takes something that's extremely complex, these wrist graphs, the flexion, the extension, all of that, and really boils it down into something that someone like me, a mere mortal, can understand. And I love the graphics on screen. I love the hot streaks. I love the user interface and how intuitive it is and I can literally see the results I'm having. So those are all huge positives for me. I also think this thing is priced very fairly where it starts there at the 295 US dollar mark. Now, if we talk about a couple of negatives, there's two that stand out in my mind. The first one has to do with putting. Now, like I said, I did practice with the hack motion doing putting, but the thing I found with the hack motion putting is that sometimes it picked up shots that I didn't take and it missed quite a number of shots that I did take. So the putting I think could use a little improvement, at least with the unit that I tested. The second thing I would say is it's a little awkward to wrap that strap around your hand. So if you're not using a golf glove, you lose a little bit of feel, especially in the putting, right? That's probably where you're not gonna have a golf glove on. So I'm not really sure if there's a better solution. It's probably the best solution that exists, but it's just a little bit of a hang up for me. But apart from that, I have really enjoyed using this hack motion. Now let's quickly talk about who I think this device is best for. First off, I'll tell you who I don't think it's for. I don't think it is for your beginner golfers because this is some really advanced stuff. And I really think you should master the basics, working on your mechanics of your golf swing, probably working with a PGA professional at your local club or driving range if you have access to one of those. I think that would be a better use of your time and money in the beginning. But if you are a mid handicapper, you're really looking to make those improvements, or you're a low handicapper like me. I am really working on the finer details of what I'm doing out there and I've dropped from a 5.1 now to a 4.5 over the last couple of months really trying to put in the work. If you're in that camp, the mid to lower handicappers, I think you're going to really get a lot out of this device. Like I said, I think it's priced really fairly. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I hope you continue to watch more of the reviews. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you do hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you back here real soon on another edition of Let's Play Through.